Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Ginger Show. I am so excited to have Ruth Berman here with us today. Hi, Ruth. Hi. And for those of you that don't know Ruth, um, Ruth is a PR guru, also a very good friend of mine. Um, so I'm so excited to have her on the show today because it's definitely um, not easy to pin her down, but we got her pinned. So I'm so excited. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about Ruth Berman. So Ruth is a career journalist. Uh, Ruth has worked in corporate communications before launching her own public relations firm in 2001. She is a proud collaborator with agencies, including your marketing liaison and your medical liaison. And Ruth is based in Las Vegas and works everywhere. Uh, she is a, a national publicist. So we are so excited to have you on the show today, Ruth. Thank you for taking the time. I'm excited too. And we are recording this from South. I'm here in South Bend, Indiana at my mom's home. Yes, I can see it looks uh, beautiful. The, the background there is nice and green. So that's very nice. Yes, All right, so, um, the, is the best. <laughs> say that again. The fall in the Midwest is the best. Oh, yes, for sure. All right. Well, we are excited today. So the speaking topic today is leadership lessons. Um, and Ruth is a wealth of knowledge. So I'm so excited to ask her a few questions today on stuff that can help us all out. Um, and the title of our show is Resource Resourcefulness is a Gift. And so a couple of things um, just to get started, Ruth, I'd like to ask you, you know, what is your favorite aspect of your public relations firm? What I like most about my public relations firm is sharing stories and amplifying important voices. And that is just, that brings me so much joy, Ginger, even in the work that your firm and mine do together, sharing expertise from a medical or a mental health expert or sharing the story of, of someone that is really going to help someone else that is either reading or watching the story. That just brings me so much joy. I see that you love what you do. I, and I know that you love what you, what you do. So that is awesome. So how are you? And we talk about, you know, the show is obviously my, the premise of my show is work, life and wellness. Um, and balancing all of those things is not easy. Um, and I know you are on the go 24 seven. Um, you travel a lot for your job. You are always, you know, on call, if you will, for the news uh, station. So how do you keep wellness a priority? And, and that is definitely a challenge for me, Ginger. And we've had conversations about that. I, you know, my, my wellness is really a lifetime journey. I have lost and gained the same 100 pounds multiple times in my life. And my default when I am busy, which is a word I don't love, when I am busy or over-functioning at work is to let my wellness go, is to make myself my last priority. So it's something that I, I like something I like to say is I am willing to start over as many times as it takes with my wellness and other women entrepreneur friends are really a partner on my wellness journey. I have a good friend who is an attorney who practices in multiple states. Shout out to Leah Martin, who will meet me early in the morning at the gym and um, having that built-in accountability is something that really helps me. So yeah, accountability is, is huge. And, you know, I know that you're kind of an accountability partner for myself, but we see this often, especially in entrepreneurial types, um, men and women both. But I think I see it more in women, to be honest, where we are kind of the last, the last on the list, um, where we put everybody else first. So I'm not sure if that's a woman thing or if it's an entrepreneurial thing, but I definitely see a lot of that going on. And at least we're aware of it and we're making strides um, to get better. And like you said, you know, how did you say it? starting over every day is OK? <laughs> I just said I'm willing to start over as many times as it takes. And in the past. I really judged, I was very harsh with myself. I really judged myself 
you know, I should know better. How did I gain this weight again? Why haven't I worked out in four days? You know, why, you know, why have I not made myself, you know, delicious, healthy food? Why did I have that extra cocktail or that extra piece of bread at that event? But for me, it's really about radical self-forgiveness and, and loving myself most and being willing to start with a clean slate the next day. And, and that helps me at work too, because again, you know, my, the bar that I set for myself is very, very high and often unrealistic because there are a lot of factors that come into play that, you know, sometimes make it impossible for me to get the results I want to get. So I'm constantly being flexible and also I'm willing to hustle really hard and I can share an example if that's okay with you. Sure. Um, I've been, I, I try to visit, uh, try to make family a priority as you know, and I got off a plane um, a couple of weeks ago uh, when I was visiting family, got an email from a reporter who uh, hadn't received a response I had sent to an email and I didn't bring my laptop with me on this trip. And I got off the plane and I knew I needed to be present immediately with family. So what I did was, and it was a high, it was a national news story. It was super important, tight deadline. So I paused and I thought, okay, how can I do this so that I can still be present with family? So I reached out to a personal friend of mine um, who is an expert um, on this specific topic. It happened to be a healthcare news story that was going national the next the next couple of days, I reached out to a personal friend. Can you do me a favor? Can you send a response to this one question in the next 20 minutes? And she said, yes, the story worked out. So it's just radical, radical hustle, but also a lot of self-forgiveness. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I look at you and, and how much you do and, you know, how much success you've had in your industry and, you know, you're helping so many companies and so many people, you know, elevate their brand with the PR that you do. Um, and the fact that you really do prioritize your family and you're prioritizing your health and wellness is, you know, to be commended because I think, you know, everybody looks at the external success, how busy we are and how many photos we're posting and where we've been and what we're doing. But I don't think people really honor the value or see the value or understand that really putting family and wellness has to come first. Uh, and I think that's for everyone. And um, we don't talk about that enough. You know, we talk about success. We talk about how busy we are. We talk about all the things that we're doing for our clients and for, you know, for our nonprofits and stuff like that. But, you know, we don't talk enough about how important it is to put family and wellness first. So I'm glad you're talking about it today. And, you know, I know that you do a lot for a lot of companies. Um, I know one of the hot topics now that I keep getting a lot of questions about is, you know, SEO. So if we could uh, talk a little bit about business now, if you don't mind, because um, I know you're helping a lot of companies put, put, put them on the map uh, when it comes to their online presence, SEO, search engine optimization. Everybody wants to rank. Everybody wants their websites um, being seen. So how are you helping and how are you getting referrals um, from SEO companies, you know, to, to help clients? And yeah, thank you for asking. You know, in some of our work together, we talk about this a lot. I did not coin this term, but I call it Google juice. <laughs> um, Google juice is really important for all of my clients. You know, I mean, it's not about... It's it's about so much. So what started happening actually recently, and I've been in business for myself for, this is my 22nd year, as you mentioned earlier, uh, what's starting to happen is I'm starting to get referrals from search engine optimization experts who are seeing that the backlinks and the you know high quality SEO results that are a direct result from earned media coverage are helping their clients. So I just got um, a couple of really great referrals from SEO companies to for me to help with PR um, and earn media coverage. And I'm also pretty pushy with my own clients when they do get earned media coverage to upload those news stories to 
to YouTube to um, create their own backlinks and to really, really optimize earned media coverage to propel their brands. And I know some of our shared clients were very aggressive and very assertive in, in how we do that. So I think that's really exciting and gratifying for me when I am actually getting referrals from SEO companies. Yeah, that's huge. You know, I talk to my clients all the time about their online presence and clients will say to me, well, you know, does my social media profile have anything to do with my SEO? And my answer to that is yes. Google tracks everything. They're tracking all of your online platforms. They're looking at how much you're doing. They're looking at new content that you're putting out and they're ranking you based on that. And so if you don't have an online presence and you're just doing, you know, basic stuff, you know, putting up a blog once every six months or something like that, you're really not getting the Google juice. And if you have someone like yourself, a PR person that's actually creating amazing content, you want to share that everywhere. I mean, as much, you know, on your social media, your business pages, your personal profiles, I mean, everywhere you can because Google is watching. So that's really, really cool. Um, so I always like to kind of ask a few tips and I know you have a ton of knowledge. So I wanted to ask you a few things. Um, if you could give us some tips on like life, uh, work life and wellness um, about sharing stories. Okay. Um, one of the, I'll give, I'll give a couple. And one of the first ones is don't wait, do it now. Uh, when, when you have an opportunity to, to share a story, to share your expertise, just do it, just do it. Uh, for example, I, in the past, I like to wait personally for the perfect moment to, to share a story, to take advantage of an amazing opportunity like being on the Ginger Show. Is today ideal? Not necessarily. I don't have my hair and makeup professionally done. At my, I'm at my mom's house. The lighting isn't perfect. The sound isn't perfect. However, this is an amazing opportunity. And in the past, I would turn down opportunities and miss out completely. So do it when you're offered. I recently had a friend's husband, I don't want to share any specifics, who had an amazing opportunity to share his expertise in relation to some breaking news. And for whatever reason, he wasn't able to make time for it. And he completely missed this amazing window of opportunity. So I like to say, do it even if it's not perfect. So that's one thing is just not waiting until the perfect or the optimal time to share your story. Another tip that I would give is don't worry about it seeming as if you're bragging to share a story and don't be so concerned about optics. Don't be so concerned that it might make you not look good. That's something I used to worry about in the past, about being authentic on social media or being authentic and sharing some of my failures that I learned from, is that people might judge me or people might not think I'm fancy enough. But now I'm really bold and real and I share, I share the good, bad, and the ugly in hopes that it might help someone or that someone else might learn from it. And I do that with my wellness as well. You you do do that. And I and I love that about you. And I try to do the same thing. You know, I share about my recovery journey and, you know, from addiction to alcohol. And, you know, I'm celebrating 15 years in, in four days. And I'm very open about that. Not because I'm trying to brag or pat myself on the back. That, no, that is not what it's about. It's about sharing my story so that I might help somebody else so that I can give somebody else hope that it is possible because when you're stuck in addiction, um, whether it be, you know, any kind of drug or, or, or alcohol addiction, it's, it's difficult and it feels hopeless and it feels, um, you know, very much um, impossible to get out of. So it's, it's important, I think, to share your story. And, you know, I also am very, uh, open and I always share about the philanthropy that I do. 
And again, it is not to pat myself on the back. It is not so that people go, oh, you know, Ginger's such a great person. No, it's about me wanting to share um, about the fact that this amazing charity is doing these amazing works and hoping that I'll inspire other people to, to do that as well. So I think you're right. I think people get too caught up in worrying about what other people are going to think and they don't share their stories. Absolutely, Ginger. And um, as as I have shared and as I'm very public about, I have a lifelong journey with disordered eating. And I love to share um, not the before and afters, but the durings. I see so many people who have had challenges with, with I say wellness, not weight. Because for me, it's not just about the number on the scale. I like to share about the during. I've done marathons, half marathons. I'm just running a little bit again. And that's okay. So I like to share about the durings. I like to share that I I just did my first 5K without stopping. You know, and I've shared that in the media as well as on social media. Um, and yeah, to your point, you know, um, with with charity events and with community give back, I love to share about that sort of thing. I also, uh, you mentioned events earlier and the fancy photos on social media. Something that I'm very public about is when I opt out of things uh, because I'm very aware, I, I, I am challenged with anxiety. And uh, that's something I'm very open about. And I like to, I'm, I have really great self-awareness. And I know sometimes it's not a good time for me to attend an event. And sometimes it's the perfect thing to do because being in community and embracing community lifts me up. Agreed. All right. So how about um, consistency and starting over as many times as it takes? Yes, I I think consistency is 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 something that I'm really challenged with because when I am you know doing a lot at work or personally, I I struggle with making even the most simple decisions. So I like to just say, just start, just do the thing. Last night here in Indiana. I didn't feel like working out at all. I, you know, had had a really full day here, but you know, right before sundown, I got out and did forty minutes and uh, talked on the phone to a friend. So just, just kind of knowing that I feel better when I'm active, I just feel better. So yeah, just starting, starting small, but starting. Very cool. And then let's end with a uh, tip about work. How about some PR is magic for search engines? Can you tell us uh, how that works? Yeah, well, we you know we talked about SEO a little bit earlier, but yeah, I like to say PR is na- magic for search engines for sure. So it's about even if you hire help to do it, because it's very time intensive. So it's about you know every time you're in the news in any way. It's about taking the time to get that stuff on your website, get those assets uploaded to YouTube, do a little blog with a backlink. And if you don't have a backlink in the news story, create your own backlinks. So it's really about being very intentional. And even if you don't do it immediately, calendar it and do it or hire someone else to do it. Really optimizing every single opportunity so that you appear in search. Because as you know, and as you and I have talked about, Ginger, when someone is looking to hire anyone, they're going to they're gonna search before they even have a conversation. So search engines are, are more important than ever. And also the other thing that I know 100% is that our prospective clients, people that want to work with us, people that refer us, have zero attention span. They're going to do a quick search before they even take the time to look at our website or our social. So true. I, um, my la- One of my last clients found me on Google and she had found three other companies, well, three total companies. And I was the third person that she interviewed. And, and then she ended up hiring me. And I said, you know, 
Google, otherwise known as God, because <laughs> Google is so powerful. And, um, you know, and we were kind of just, we really aligned and we really got along. We, we became quick friends and we were just like, you know, Google brought us together, otherwise known as Google equals God. <laughs> God brought us together. So very cool. Well, I'm so thankful for you coming in and sharing some tips about life and wellness and work. And from somebody that does as much as you do, it meant so much for for me or to me, I should say, uh, for you to be here today. So thank you so much for being on the Ginger Show. Um, how can people reach you? How can people follow you, Ruth? And Ginger, congratulations and thank you for all that you do to inspire others. And congratulations on your anniversary of sobriety. That's huge. Uh, so I'm everywhere. Uh, RuthFerman.com is my website. R-U-T-H-F-U-R-M-A-N.com. Really simple. I'm on Instagram as Ruthie Furman. I'm on LinkedIn as Ruth Furman. I'm on Facebook. I'm on X, formerly known as Twitter, as Image Words. I am A G E W O R D S. And Image Words on is my company Facebook page. Ruth Hamburg Furman is my personal Facebook page. I'm everywhere. And, uh, if, and if people can't find me, they can just go through you. Or you can just go to Google, otherwise known as God, and search Ruth Furman. And I'm sure you will get tons of information that comes up. Thank you so much for being here today, Ruth. I really appreciate you taking the time. Have a great day.